what I'd like to teach you now is the instruments that you're going to use and how you're going to use them. So of course this is a needle driver. Um, it's straight. It's not curved. It's not curved on any of its surfaces. It's straight and you should learn to use a needle driver without putting your into the holes that are uh, here the needle driver. Don't put your fingers in the holes. Um, learn to palm the needle driver and learn to open the needle driver the way that I just did using and I use my fourth finger I push down and it opens it in on my palmer my thenar eminence here on, on the thumb side learn to do this and you're gonna have to carry a needle holder around in your pocket all day long and do nothing except just what I'm doing here open and close open and close open and close the needle holder okay um, these needle holders that I'm teaching you with are sort of stiff the ones we use in the operating room probably cost between two and three hundred dollars a piece um, and for those of you who are left-handed they do make left-handed needle drivers so for those of you who are left-handed um, they do have that convenience for you in the operating room because there is a difference where they click a left-handed needle driver will click opposite of this meaning that instead of the right half locking over the ridges on a left-handed needle driver it does just the opposite so and again I'm right-handed so keep your fingers out of the holes it is allowable to touch the needle while you're in the operating room if you need to load up your needle the way that I prefer to load a needle is a little different than what a textbook will, will show you every needle has an inflection point and the inflection point if you remember from first year calculus is where the curve goes from curve up to curve down or vice versa from curve down to curve up on a needle if this shows well on the camera this is the inflection point right here of the needle in theory that's the strongest point of the needle and you're supposed to load it there but I never do um, my wrist doesn't quite go back that far so I load mine right at the bottom of the needle and this is the way it should be loaded it should be loaded at a 90 degree angle from the tip of the needle driver and it should be loaded at the tip of the needle driver not like this that's incorrect this is incorrect this is incorrect the absolute correct way again is at the inflection point 90 degree this would it, this may be the way that the technician in the operating room will hand you this suture but I, I always ask them if they could load it a little lower for me and they're happy to do that for you so <clears throat> this is how it should look now notice when I'm loading it I don't know if you can see but I'm palming it and no time am I I'm not doing this there are several YouTube videos that, sh that surgeons have uh, their, load, their needle loaded like this and they tell you to put your finger here and to sew like this and that's incorrect you should not put your fingers in the holes of the needle driver if you watch cardiac surgeons operate they never do that um, and they're probably the best surgeons are the cardiac surgeons so your needles loaded like this you this is a pair of Adson pickups or forceps we don't call them tweezers in your house you call them a tweezer but in the operating room they're called a forcep now, these are the correct type of forcep to learn to sew with because they have teeth um, they have ridges here the ones that have and they, they come in almost all of your suture kits the ones you order from Amazon just have a rat tooth on them they have one single tooth those are skin forceps those are for grabbing skin 
These are not. These are actually uh, the ones that you should use to learn uh, to suture with. Uh, again, they're called an Adson forcep, A-D as in dog, A-D-S-O-N. So the proper way to hold the needle driver, the proper way to load your needle, and when you hold your forceps, hold them like you would a pencil. Do not hold them like this. This is wrong. Hold them like a pencil, like this. So, when we take our first stitch, you're going to rotate your wrist back, and the needle is going to come about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the skin, but it's going to come perpendicular to the skin. Once you're there, rotate it, And if you need to get a little more leverage, pop it open, grab it, push it through. This takes time to learn. So now I'm pulling my stitch through. It's legal to grab the needle and re to reload my needle driver. But again, notice, fingers are not in the holes. Okay. So again, stitch 90 degrees. Go back until your, needle, your needle is perpendicular to the skin. Rotate your wrist. And you can do it in one bite or two bites. You can either do it here, one half of the skin, and go back and put it through the other half of the skin. Or, if you want, you can do it all in one hand motion. Like this. You can do it in one bite if you prefer, okay? So, I'm going to undo this, pull this through, and then I'm going to show you how to do an instrument tie. So this is not a one-handed tie or a two-handed tie. You're literally going to tie the knot with your instruments. So, again, load the needle and the needle driver. Right at the very tip, 90 degree angle. Put your first stitch through. Pop open the needle driver. Notice my fingers are not in the holes. Pull the needle through. And now we're going to tie with just our instruments. So pull until you have a about a half of an inch left of suture. About a half of an inch. Put your needle holder on top of the suture. Make two throws. One, two. So it slipped. One, two. Come across grab the tip of the suture, pull it through. And I crossed my hands when I did that. So now I'm going to let go of the short end. Needle driver goes on top of the stitch again, but this time it's only one half. It's only one turn around the, the stitch, around the needle driver. Now cross my hands again. Needle holder goes on top of the suture, one wrap, grab the short end, cross your hands. Laying, laying the, the suture flat, the needle driver goes on top. One wrap, and then cross your hands again. If you continue to, to tie your knots like this, and I'm using a silk suture, Silk only requires three knots, but if you, can, if you do it exactly the way I show you, you won't get confused on whether you need to wrap above the stitch or below the stitch. If you do it properly, you, your needle holder will always be above the thread. So here, do it again, lay it flat. 
needle holder and we make two wraps, one, two, on the first knot. Cross my hands. If you do this, you will always put your needle driver on top of the stitch. You won't do it under here. Always here. One wrap, cross your hands. Needle on top, needle driver on top. One wrap, cross your hands. Same thing. One wrap, cross your hands. So this is silk. Um, silk requires three knots. So uh, three knots to, to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Vicro, which is an absorbable suture, will require about seven. So that is how to do a, a uh, instrument tie. Now the only thing that's left for me to show you is how to do a vertical mattress stitch and a horizontal mattress suture. Uh, these are types of stitches that we put in usually on skin, almost always on skin, because they give us better holding power. If you continue to do the type of stitch like I was just showing you, pull it through, tie your instrument tie, and you do that, cut it, tie an instrument tie again, cut it, you're going to have interrupted stitches. But I want to show you something called a vertical mattress and a horizontal mattress. So a vertical mattress stitch is used for strength. We start about a quarter of an inch away from the skin edge, pull it through deep into the tissue, so it's fairly deep down into the, the laceration into the skin, meaning depth down deep towards the bottom of the incision. Again, fingers are not in the holes. Same thing here. Start deep and come out about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the skin. And now what you're going to do is reverse your needle. You're going to actually sew away from you. So we load the needle the same way, but now we come right up to the edge of the skin, not very deep, right to the edge of the skin on the other side again not very deep and we pull it through this is called a vertical mattress stitch and you would do an instrument tie to put that together and this is done for deep lacerations for example over a joint like your knee joint where you need more holding power so this, again, we're doing an instrument tie. We need three knots. So that is a vertical mattress stitch. The horizontal mattress stitch is exactly the same, except instead of making it go from far edge to far edge, near edge to near edge, so for a horizontal mattress, we're going to start relatively far away, bring it through, come out the same distance, and now instead of going and putting our stitch here like we did with the vertical mattress, we're going to put it just down about an eighth of an inch, same depth, and right next to our other stitch. So the first suture that I showed you, which is the vertical mattress, is nothing more than a needle going in, coming out towards the skin. This one, it just forms the letter U, the letter U in the skin. I came in here, made the letter U cross and pulled it back out. So that is a horizontal mattress suture. 
So again, tie it, instrument tie. There's one knot, two knots, three knots. Vertical mattress, horizontal mattress. You may have to back the tape up on this one several times to see how I did it.